Welcome to Bridgehampton Presbyterian Church. Today's service focuses on the celebration of Mother's Day. A prayer. God of love, whom Jesus knew as a caring parent, direct our thoughts to your ways as we listen for your word. Amen. Do have a couple of readings this morning? We'll actually have three, but here's the first two. Proverbs 31, 25 to 31. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. And then a second reading from 1 Corinthians 13 and verses 4 through 7. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. May God add God's blessing to these readings. There was once a young minister in a Presbyterian church who had heard that the retired moderator of the General Assembly was coming to visit his congregation on a Sunday that just happened to be Mother's Day. Anxious as he was to make a good impression on the visiting moderator, he began his sermon with the words, Friends in the congregation, I have to tell you something. I need you to know that I have spent the best years of my life in the arms of another man's wife. There was a brief startled pause until he clarified the situation by telling them, my mother. <sighs> the next week, the elderly moderator was preaching at a nearby congregation. He'd been impressed by the younger minister's joke. Unfortunately, like myself, that moderator was getting on in years. And he began, I want you to know I have spent the best years of my life in the arms of another man's wife. There was again a pause, after which he said, To tell you the truth, Right now I can't remember who it was. All of which is a timely reminder. Never forget your mother. Well, I brought some things along today for Mother's Day to remind me about Mother's Day and the sorts of things that mothers often do. We'll put the beginning letters of each one together and hopefully they'll spell the word mother. Well, the first thing I've brought along, and you don't see as many as these around now since we all had iPhones and direction finders in our cars. However, I've brought a map along with me. It's a map of Liverpool, where I used to live. And it's got all the streets and all the roads and the whole place marked out. Probably a little bit out of date now, but in its day, it was extremely useful. A map. Now this map reminds me that it's often mums who take you places. To school, to a friend's house, out to the shops, even to church. My, now you may not always want to go where mum's going, but at a certain age she'll take you with her anyway. And a map reminds us that mums spend a lot of time taking us places. But a map does more than that, because a map also guides us in the right direction. And that's another thing that mothers try and do for their children, guide them in the right way to go and teach them the right way to live their lives. 
What else is in my bag? Uh-huh. What's this? An orange! Oh, the second letter of mother. I wonder how many, when they were growing up or even today, expected mother to have dinner ready when they got home from school and breakfast when they got up. An orange reminds me that it often falls on a mum's shoulders to see that the family are fed. But more than that, a mother nourishes a family. So on Mother's Day, don't forget to say thank you. And I'm sure help up with the washing up or the cooking or, or any of that stuff is appreciated whatever time of the year you offer it. What else have I got in my bag here? Aha! Uh -huh. This is a thermometer. And in, in my younger days, we used to have ones that we put in your mouth. But this one, special, you put it on your head. You see how I'm doing? Ninety-eight point one. I guess that's about average. It's good to know. If you're sick, sometimes it's mum who has to take care of you. And mums do take care of us. They help us get better. Not just better from illness, but better in all kinds of ways. So a thermometer, which begins with the letter T, reminds us of mums who look after us when we're down and help us get better again. What's next? Well, I had to bring a picture of this thing because I couldn't bring the whole thing with me. It's a house. The fourth letter in mother is, of course, H. When I lived at home, it usually fell on mum's shoulders to keep the place tidy. I must confess, I didn't always help that process very much. Mum would spend all day getting the place clean and I'd come home with my shoes all dirty after being playing out. Don't you walk on that carpet with your muddy shoes! Do things ever happen like that in your house? It reminds me of the joke about the dad who looked out of the window and he saw his son climbing on the roof. In panic he shouted out, If you fall off that roof and break your legs, don't come running to me. Hmm. It's not the roof, it's the house, the house that we're thinking of today. And I bought this picture of a house to remind us, sometimes it's left up to mum to keep the place tidy. And again, mums don't mind help in that process. Now, my bag's empty. But I'm not suggesting E for empty. The last two things which you have already with you. I'll give you a clue about the first one. And there are two of them. They begin with the fifth letter of mother and they hang on your head. And without them, you wouldn't hear a word. I'm talking about ears. Ears. Mums are usually people we expect to listen to us. We tell them our problems, we share our good times too. And if they're not too busy doing all the other things they have to do, they're always ready with a listening ear, ready to hear us and help us. And you know what the final letter of mother is? The letter R. And I want to think about a verse in Genesis 2, and verse 21 and 22. Then the Lord God made the man fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the flesh. He formed the woman out of the rib and brought her to him. I'm sure you know exactly where your rib is. It's a bone right near your heart. You can try and find it if you like while you're, while you're watching. Near to your heart and close by your side. The Bible tells us that Eve was not only the first wife, she was also the first mother. And so we have a special day 
to celebrate mothers. We celebrate Mother's Day to remind us that mom is someone close by our side and near to our hearts. And so there we have it. Mother M, we had a map, someone who shows us the way. O for orange, someone who feeds us. Tita, thermometer, someone who looks after us. H was for the house, someone who makes our home special. E for the ears, someone ready to listen to us. And the R for the rib, someone close to our side and near to our hearts. Of course, in some households, it may be dad or somebody else who does a lot of the things that I've mentioned. But as today is Mother's Day, I'm using mum as a way of speaking about the importance of things that all parents and guardians try to do for us. One of the beautiful things about a good parent is that the way they treat us can remind us of the care that God has over our lives. God is like a good shepherd and a good shepherd is like a good parent. God has given us the words of the Bible to guide us. God nourishes our spiritual lives through the Holy Spirit, lifts us up when we fall, makes us feel at home, is always ready to listen to us and close by our side to bless our lives. Someone once said that God gave us mothers to teach us how to love. So let us thank God for our mums. One thing is for sure, we wouldn't be here without them. Because like all of you, I was born at an early age. And although I don't remember it, I know for certain my mother was there. <laughs> Time for another Bible reading. John 14, 15 to 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I won't leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. And because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Jesus sought to have his disciples obey his teaching, not by coercion or bribery, but through love. In a similar way, often we honour those we love by living in a way that we know would be pleasing to them. We don't want to hurt their feelings or have them disappointed in us. Love is a powerful motivator. Well, whichever side of the equation you are, the relationship between parent and child can be a tricky one. The child is seeking to discover who they are, what the boundaries may be, what makes them unique. The parents are dealing with their own issues. None of us ever quite quit that journey of self-discovery. And even though as we get older there comes a time when we lose our parents to God's nearer presence, it's one of the great blessings God has given us that somehow they're always with us. We still hear their words. We're still carried on their prayers. We still heed their advice. And we even try to pass it on to others. I'd like to share a song I composed in honour of my own parents, who though now in God's nearer presence, continue to guide me with their life, light and influence. Mother, dear mother, I know you prayed for me Throughout those wild years, Lord, 
what will that void be? Wish you were here now, I could thank you for your words. Not a single one was wasted, someone must have heard. Father, dear father, religion was never your thing. Yet you taught me right and wrong I never wanted for a thing All those conversations Which set the world to rights I still long for reassurance That I've turned out all right Now on a Sunday I try and play my part Stand up there in a pulpit and lay bare my heart Words don't come easy, phrases can't always be found I just keep praying the Spirit will spread the love around Which I never listened And so it became my life Sometimes I wonder What on earth I'd be If it wasn't for the light You're shining down on me So a champion. Someone who will be in your corner, always. Someone watching your back, someone watching you, treasuring you, keeping you in their heart. Parents are nature's champions, biologically led to love and nurture, feed and foster, support and sustain. They can't keep their eyes off of you. From Adam and Eve, parents creating babies, caring for their offspring, all part of God's plan for fruitfulness. The multiplication of love from generation to generation. And this is a true story, a story for many happy people, dearly beloved by happy parents. But other true stories need telling. Parents who champion themselves at the expense of their offspring. 
Parents who hate themselves and have no room in their hearts for love. Parents who abandon children or who are forced to abandon children. Parents who die leaving orphans. Who will care for the motherless? Who will cherish the fatherless? Who will champion the neglected? Let us pray. God our Father, life giver, you cannot forget the child you created. God our Mother, life sustainer, you cannot forget the child you nurse. God our parent, our protector, you are an ever-present help in times of trouble. You are the champion of the orphan. You seek out the lost and the lonely. The smallest lamb will not escape your notice, great shepherd. You carry us in your arms. You speak tenderly. You seek justice for us. You pronounce judgment on those who hurt us. You provide a place for us, people who shepherd us and take us into their own flock. You raise up communities of nurturers, groups of people who will not let a single little one be lost. Guardian of us all, we give you thanks for mothers, fathers, all who foster us, gifts from your tender hands, our divine champion. And on this special day, we offer all our prayers, our prayers for families, families going through good times, families going through hard times, families that seem to have it all together, and families that are a little broken. And added to those prayers are all the things we carry within us, thoughts spoken out loud, and those we are afraid to voice and carry deep in our hearts. So summing up all we would wish to say, I invite you to say the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us on this Mothering Sunday. May God's blessing be with you and with your home. And now, go in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And let the people say, Amen.